Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The one and only, my co-host, the matriarch of the DLU podcast, Gabby. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. And oh boy, oh boy, do we have a lot to cover. A crazy weekend in the world of professional wrestling. You know, obviously, we're going to talk about um, the king and queen of the ring results. We're going to talk a little bit about this past Monday Night Raw. And, of course, we're going to talk about AEW's Double or Nothing. I can't believe it was five years already since the very first Double or Nothing when everyone was walking away talking about Cody, you know, mm-hmm. breaking the throne and, you know, Cody having that banger of a match with Dustin Rhodes and, mm-hmm. you know, the list goes on and on. It was incredible. So to see, you know, how this co- this very young company, you know, is, you know, started from nothing. Everyone was calling it the T-shirt company. And now all of a sudden, you know, five years later, we're critiquing matches and, and you Osprey. know. Who the fuck? I mean, hey, listen, you know, the fact that he, Tony Khan kind of took New Japan out of New Japan and put it <laughs> in, uh, you know what I mean? So, yeah. we're going to talk, like I said, we're going to talk about that in the, you know, in, in a nutshell, but I do want to talk about um, this past uh, Saturday's uh, King and Queen in the Room. That's a lot to say in, like, one sentence, right? <laughs> it's a lot going on. There's a lot the tongue. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But, um, like I said, it took place at the, uh, the Jetta Superdome. Not the Silver Dome, but the Super Dome, you know, <laughs> in front of a capacity crowd. And I was saying this last week in last week's episode when I was breaking down this entire card. And how it was only five matches for these international PLEs. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that the, the, these are throwaway events because clearly they're going out there working. But Yeah, for sure. But is it, you do, what, what reason do you think that they're only just scaling it back? Instead of eight matches, all we're going to give them five. I mean, honestly, we'll get there later. But, like, look at how long Double or Nothing was this year. <laughs> I would rather have a handful of quality matches. Very, very than true. No shade. I, I, that pay-per-view was super long. Like, it would think we said, the first thing I texted you about was, like, yo, that was extremely long. Like, Yeah, that, that, so was, that was a bit, yeah. You have both ends of the spectrum, right? Like, you have a shorter pay-per-view or a premium live event, and then you have, like, a longer one, so... Interesting. Unbelievable. But the dark match, uh, because you obviously this past Friday, uh, Bianca Belair did lose her uh, her final, I guess the, um, I guess it will be the SmackDown the semifinals, semifinals ma- yeah. sm- match. So, she lost that match, so now we're heading on to this particular PLE where her and Jade Cargill defended the Women's Tag Team Championships against Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. Obviously, with a dark match, you want to get the crowd going. You know, we mm-hmm. kind of knew, you know, what the result was going to be. But i got to tell you, and we say this all the time about Bianca Belair, just her ability to, with her gear, I mean putting the abs on the gear because mm-hmm. you know obviously they have to get really creative you know when you're wrestling in Saudi Arabia because of their rules and everything they can't the women can't show any skin or anything so that's so, one of the things I actually wanted to bring to our attention like think back to the first Saudi show where the girls had on like just bodysuits with t-shirts remember yeah. that like when they like it just was not like it would just have their name on it which is like very very boring and now they have like full-on gear like I just I love the progression of the women's events there like because remember, it's, it, it's free them to even put on a women's event or a women's match. It's already, like, a lot for them. Um, so I just, I love the progression of WWE and their events over there. Yeah, I really do. And like I said, you know, kudos to, to Andy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. Like I said, two talented individuals. But mm-hmm. I mean, we all knew that this was just to get the crowd going. And, and I got it. This, that new finisher from Bianca and mm-hmm. Jade Cargill. <laughs> I mean, it's there. It's it. You know how we have these makeshift tag teams, and you mm-hmm. know they're together for a little bit. A little hodgepodge, a little, yeah. bit, a little bit of that. But they're really starting to gel, truly as a ta- as a true tag team. I love it. They're wearing the same colors, and they have a incredible finisher. I don't even mm-hmm. I don't even know what you call it. <laughs> Get something very innovative, something new, something different. I love it. I love to see women on the card. I love to see women that aren't necessarily like, I hate to say a squash match, but you know what I mean? Like, I love, I love to see the progression because you know, that's always been my biggest gripe with AEW as well as WWE, like the women's wrestling matches and the lack of. So. Very, very true. Very true. 
But speaking of uh, women's matches, you know, we're, we're off to the main card on uh, King and Queen of the Ring. It's for the uh, the Women's World Championship, where the champion Becky Lynch was defending against Liv Morgan, who was on her legendary Liv Morgan Revenge Tour. And I have to tell you, this run for Liv Morgan as a heel, it's very untapped potential, because when you see that she's tapping into something deeper and she has a little bit of a mean streak, which we've never seen before, because for the most part, we've seen the happy-go-lucky, live right. working, I'm happy to be here, yay, you know. But yep. I just think that now, you know, she's a little bit of a badass. And I love it. And they're tapping into that. So, you know, obviously, I, again, I didn't think that there was going to be a title change in this match. I truly believe that Becky was going to hold on to the title. But... You know, during the course of the match, you know, Dirty Dom, you know, we obviously come, you know, w you know, works his way to to the ringside, and you kind of, I was like, okay, what's going on now? Now mm -hmm. I didn't know that it was it was confusing because initially everyone's thinking, oh, he's going to help uh, Liv, but he was actually yep. trying to help Becky. Allegedly, allegedly. Uh, well, we'll see how that plays out. Alle alleged, allegedly, you know, just like just like the Diddler, allegedly, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about that. But, you know, it, it, it went into Dom, I think, what was it, she bumped into uh, Becky while she was on the the, uh, the rope mm -hmm. there, and Liv does her finisher and pins Becky 1, 2, 3 in 16 minutes, 25 seconds, and we have a new uh, women's world champion in uh, Liv Morgan. Um, talk about, you know, now what this title run means versus... Her previous title run when she beat Ronda Rousey a couple of years ago for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I think, like you mentioned, like it's it's different. We've never seen like a true heel Liv. Um, I enjoy the cut character development that Liv's got going right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's just very different than what you expect from her. And I'm looking forward to seeing how the re Revenge Tour continues. Because I'm sure it ain't over. Yeah, and I mean, based on what we saw on Raw, which we'll get into. <laughs> oh, boy. Dom, Dom, you done messed up, boy. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> but um, on to the next match is the triple threat match for the uh, the Intercontinental Championship. Um, Sami Zayn, who came out to a huge reception to that crowd in Saudi Arabia. Obviously, displaying his um, Islamic heritage and, you know, mm -hmm. proud of that. And they're proud of him. You know, having him out there in Saudi. You know, but he defended against Chad Gable and Bronson Reed. Now, as I stated before, you know, Chad Gable is really, again, like Liv, another mean streak. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, you know, obviously Otis is at ringside because he, he hasn't ditched Otis at this point. You know what I mean? Like we're, so he's still trying to, you know, see the other side, see the dark side of everything. You know, hey, you know, I've been I've been carrying you along all this time and you know, now it's you know, you need to, you know get in shape and you know all this other stuff. So it's him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And again, everything you would expect to see in a triple threat match, you know, all types of you know, the uh suplex into the power bomb thing, you know, obviously, you know, Freaking Bronson Reed with that moonsault that he missed, but oh my god, did you see that? Just the athleticism for these big guys is insane. I mean, this wasn't big, meaty men slapping meat like we'd like to see, but I mean, Bronson Reed just really goes to show you, you know, guys like Ivar, guys like uh, Bronson they Reed. They can go. They can go, and it, it reminds me of the days of old with Vader and Bam Bam Bigelow, those mm -hmm. super heavyweights that can move around that ring like a damn cruiserweight. Mm -hmm. And, but of course, you know, outside the ring, you know, Gable is um, telling Otis to to hit, you know, yeah, I mean, he's telling him, hey, I need you to close on him, I need you to close on him. All right, get it and together. Get it together. And, of course, Chad Gable is holding him up. And out of the blue, guy ducks, and uh, he ate a mean clothesline from Otis. My yeah, God, did. almost took his head off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, Sami Zayn does win with a Haluba kick, and he does the he does retain the Intercontinental Championship. Um, I, I'm liking this run, 
But now I think it's, there needs to be a little bit more depth storytelling now with, with Sammy. Now that he's the champion, you know, having that personal feud now. Because, I mean, obviously when he was feuding, you know, with the bloodline, that was that was big money. You know what I mean? We but were now highly that he's invested. The, absolutely. So now that he's the Intercontinental Champion, I do want to see a little bit more storytelling now with him being the champion. Because, again, he, he's getting into these matches, you know, with the, you know, uh, triple threat matches and this mm-hmm. and that. That's great, but it's really not. It, it, oh, oh, the champions at a disadvantage. It's not moving the needle, I guess, is what we're trying to say. Like it's just it's like it's just matches for the sake of having a match. Like, can we get Agreed. into some rhyme behind the reason? You know. Agreed, and I'm just hoping that they have you know future plans for him for the title because I just think that it lost a little bit of steam after WrestleMania. Agreed. Agreed. Because I, because to be honest with you, I didn't think he was going to even win at WrestleMania. That was the shocker. I yeah. thought, right? I thought that he was going to maybe win at this pay per view in Saudi. I thought that would have been the move, you know, to have Gunther hold on to sense. the title. You know what I mean? But again, and we'll talk about Gunther's match a little later on, and we'll we'll find out that could have been part of the plans. But I wouldn't mind Gunther as the Intercontinental Champion and King of the Ring. Are you kidding me? So. Well, like I said, we'll see. But like I said, Sammy does retain the, the Intercontinental Championship. That match was 13 minutes and 40 seconds long. The next match is the final round in the Queen of the Ring tournament. Nia Jax representing SmackDown versus Lyra Valkyria representing Raw. I was thinking Nia was going to win this thing. But it wouldn't have shocked me if they would have pulled a swerve and had the young upstart I kind of wanted it. I mean, it makes sense for Nia to win, like 100%. But her entrance, she had a really cool entrance. Like, And I can appreciate the fact that like the main roster crowd is behind her. Normally, there's kind of like right. a transition with the NXT girls moving up to main roster where it's like, who is this person? Like, I don't know if right. I'm going to get behind her or not. So the fact that the crowd is truly behind her, I was like, okay, yeah, there is something there with her. Like, I see it. I see where we're going with this. I like it. Because there's always that issue of NXT girls just really losing steam when they get to the main roster. But I think also, too, it's a change of leadership. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean obviously we know what it is. Right. right. We know what it is. You know, I, they're doing these vignettes now for mm-hmm. these for these men and women that's coming up to the main roster. So the so people that are only invested in Raw and SmackDown know who these people are when they do come up to the main roster. Mm-hmm. I think that's been the, the one main concern of ours. Mm-hmm. And that has been consistently inconsistent for for many many years I mean, w- w- mm-hmm. let's count the ways but i think that the future is bright for liar for liar valkyria i mean think about it she beat becky you know for the nxt women's championship and she put a but, really good match with naya like i could have been a squad yeah. honestly and it wasn't like that was a really good showing for her it was a really good showing and it really showed you okay the, the untapped potential that she has and this is what i feel where uh, um, a mid-card championship for the women is way overdue now because you mm-hmm. have some women that are that are that are climbing the ladder. You know the Tiffany Stratton's, the Lyra Valkyrias. You know what I mean? It's justifiable now, right? Absolutely. I mean, even like I'll be honest with you, even like if they they had the women's intercontinental championship, right? And I said it should be a veteran that should get the title, a Naomi, for example. We talked about Naomi. Yep. Right. We put we talked about Naomi before, which I would feel will be a perfect candidate. A baby face that people know, that people love, that they are they already behind her. It's they got she got the merch and all that. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, she would be the perfect candidate to be the very first women's intercontinental champion. But I think for a Lyra Valkyria or Tiffany Stratton or you know all the new girls that are that are coming up that are really cutting their teeth now on the main roster, I think they can really benefit and maybe hey chasing that title. But but like I said, getting back to the to the finals match with the women, you know, that finish with Nia Jax, my God. And she I mean, she was very safe with it. You know, she mm-hmm. obviously uh, Nia was on the second rope and uh Lyra was trying to I guess try to power bomb her off of it and she just sat boo get the, the annihilator and mm-hmm. the um the homage to the late great Yokozuna's bonsai drop, Penda one, two, three and uh, Nia Jax is your 2024 Queen of the Ring. And may I add this, and I totally forgot to, to cover this as well, is that when Hunter Triple H was um, doing some media on Friday, he mentioned that the winners of the Queen and the King of the Ring tournament will earn 
a championship opportunity at SummerSlam. So I like the fact that they're throwing a little bit more into the mix because we yeah, had because remember, last year it went right. nothing. It was nothing. Right. nothing. It was just okay. You have a prop. Like a title. And, yep. Right. That's all it was. Like the last time that I think the first and only time that a championship opportunity came out of it was when Brock won um, the 2002 yep. King of the Ring and earned a shot at SummerSlam against The Rock. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you see it and it's kind of okay, I get it. But you know, I like this now because it, it mm -hmm. really adds more prestige to. I'm not just holding. I'm not wearing this crown and cape for shits and giggles like i'm really here because now it's my time to prove why i am the king of the ring why i am mm -hmm. the queen of the ring because i'm going to have a championship opportunity at SummerSlam and take what's rightfully mine mm -hmm. so it's interesting and let's see what happens you know as the months go on but like i said i'm really proud of the of the, str the strides that nia Jax has taken you know like i said she dropped a ton of weight and she's just moving That's around good. in there like a cat and she mm -hmm. is in the psychology now that she that she's really showing, you know what I mean? It's incredible to see. So kudos to Nia Jax, kudos to Live Arcaria, you know, for putting on an incredible um, outing at mm -hmm. the Queen of the Ring. And now we have the final match of the King of the Ring tournament, the Ring General Gunta, representing Raw against the, the the Apex Predator, the Legend Killer, every nickname you could think of. The one and only Randy Orton representing SmackDown. That match goes 21 minutes and 50 seconds. And I got to tell you, first off, I would love to see a program at some point with Randy Orton and Gunther. They just mesh yes. so well together. Mm -hmm. And I said it on, on last week's show when I was previewing, because I, I had a feeling, because again, when I taped last week's show, the, the Tamatanga. Randy Orton match hadn't taken place, and I thought, I said, eh, I'm thinking Randy Orton's going to be in the finals, and I was just talking about just how smooth that guy is in the ring, and what he, what the best that he could bring out of somebody, and I think him and Gunther can have a hell of a program, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to even be a title involved, I no, just it think doesn't. it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a title involved, it can just be, hey, you know, let's go in there and let's show who's the best wrestler. And, I mean, mm -hmm. right now, you know, without going into uh, details, I think that uh, Gunther, I think he's going to be packing some gold this year. And, and you know, some more gold. 100%. I think so. There is a little controversy, though. There is some controversy. Because when Randy Orton did get penned by Gunther, his shoulder clearly was up. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know if if that was done by design. That's my or, next question. Is, do you think that was design, or do you think that was totally just a fluke? I think that could have been just a ref botch, and sometimes yeah, it's like, yeah, so you can, you can kind of get caught. You can kind of get caught up in the match, and I've seen instances where referees. I mean, even on the indies, I've seen it where you know a referee can just it, it one little thing, but the referee the, that that referee position is so key in a match. You know what I mean? Like he obviously you, you're kind of seen, you're kind of seen but not heard. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, you know, but at the same time, it's like you just kind of just know what's going on. So, but in professional wrestling, you can make something out of nothing. So hopefully, we can see you know what happens. But Gunther did pin Randy Orton to become the 2024 King of the Ring, and I sincerely hope that they sell some King General T-shirts this year, this summer. So we'll see what happens with that. And, of course, it's your main event, you know, for the Undisputed WWE Championship, the champion, um, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, defending against the United States champion, Logan Paul. Of course, was it last week before last, you know, Logan Paul stated that it's not going to be, you know, a title for title. It's just going to be for the WWE Championship, which is smart. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like... it. it we kind of knew what the finish was going to be. Yeah. I got to say we this. We had a good match in the middle. So, like, it's fine. Like, yes. I don't think yeah. anyone honestly thought Logan Paul was going to win. But they gave us a really good match. And it's just mind-boggling to me on how good this dude is. And he's only been doing this for two years. He's only been doing this for two years. And the crazy thing is, he's main evented against arguably 
one of the greatest superstars in the last 35 years in Roman Reigns. I was going to say he's Roman Reigns. Had another, mm-hmm. in another, I mean, he's had some bangers of matches. And, I mean, seriously. Yep. Two years. And he's doing this. And the shot of, of the night has to be the 360 drone cam where he was on the top rope. Cody was laying on the um, announce table. Logan took a sip of the prime, spit out the, the, the water as if he was Triple H, and does the splash. And that was his idea. Mm-hmm. I saw the text, yeah. He sent out a text, I'm assuming it's Triple H, about the the, the, the drone cam, 360 mm-hmm. degrees. And, man, that was a visual that, sheesh. But that just goes to show you, if you have a mind for the business, if you if you care about the business, if you care about what you do, and when the higher-ups, the, the powers that be, see that, they're going to buy into a lot of things that you want to do. A lot of things that you want to, some ideas that you're thinking, hey, I think, what if we try this? What if we try that? Because at the end of the day, it's about the fan experience. Because I'm mm-hmm. sitting, I, you know, I'm, on, I'm on my mini vacation and I'm just watching this on my on my on my laptop. I'm just like, oh my god, did he just do that? And it's, I mean, he he did miss that. I thought he was going to miss, but he and Cody actually ate that splash. And of course, you know, somebody handed him brass knucks, which we kind of knew was going to happen, obviously. And Cody caught, you know, he got it, you know. And next thing you know, Cody does the crossroads. Pins him one, two, three, and still um, WWE champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. I will say, you know, for everyone that was thinking that this Saudi crowd was going to be as rowdy as the French crowd, you know, if you're disappointed, then, I mean, that's your fault. Because you can't expect the France crowd every single international PLE. I mean, honestly, we have to, I mean, look at the international PLEs we've had. Like, those crowds have been in intense. Of course, they've been yeah. on fire. They have not been silent. So, right. not every crowd is going to outdo the last. But, like, let's give credit to where credit was due. They still were popping. They still were pretty yeah. amazing, all things considered. Absolutely. And then keep in mind, too, they've been there so many times already. Yeah. Think about it. They've been going over there since April of 2018, which mm-hmm. was when they did the Greatest Royal Rumble. That was the first Saudi event that they did. Mm-hmm. So, They've been on average doing two a year, with the exception of 2020, when they only did one, and that was the, um, I think it was the Super Show, I believe. That was COVID year. Yeah, The Fiend had dropped the title to um, to Goldberg. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually... (laughs) Hey, guys, um, I know you can't uh, see us right now if you're listening to the audio version of this, but... As you can see, the facial expression of me and Gabby pretty much summed that that uh, the result of that match and the decision of that match in 2020. But that's not a here nor there. We're going to tie a bow on um, Queen King and Queen of the Ring. Um, we're going to move on to uh, to Monday Night Raw though, and I got to tell you, a lot you know went down you know in that um, from this past Monday's uh, show. And I'm just going to just talk about the end of the show. Okay. <laughs> because we had, of course, the steel cage match. Because now there was that member. There's no outside interference now. It's going to be a steel cage match. Becky and Vulture. Right. Because Becky at you know at the at the PLE was saying she was, you know, she, uh, Byron Saxon was in the back. And she was walking. And she said, I'm going to invoke my rematch calls on Monday. Etc. Etc. Mm-hmm. We go to Monday night's main event, and of course, Liv Morgan and, and Becky Lynch. I mean, they're they're throwing haymakers and they're anything you would expect to cage match, right? And of course, Dirty Dom is at ringside, and then of course, Braun Strowman comes out, and now he's running around the ring, chasing <laughs> you know, chasing guys around the ring. Dom is at the open cage door, Becky's about to open, about to get out of the ring, and Braun accidentally pushes Dom right into the steel cage door, which hits Becky Lynch. And of course, that gives the opportunist for Liv Liv Morgan to fall out of the ring and retain the Women's World Championship. 
and some people saw it, and there was this big controversy where some people saw it live, and some people saw it online. Mm-hmm. When when the the kiss heard around the world happened, mm-hmm. when Liv Morgan um, laid the smackdown, <laughs> if you know what I mean, on Dirty Dom, and kissed him, and I'm just like, oh boy! So this really is starting to tell a story about from Liv Morgan. I'm going to take your title, and I'm going to take your man. He said, "I'm going to take everything you love." And I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be shot if she takes the judgment day. Yeah, they they had her talking. Like, if you kind of pay into the background of all the little segments, you can kind of see her talking to Finn. You can see her talking mm-hmm. to JD. And yeah. I'm yeah. intrigued. It, it, it's interesting television. And what's, re- what's really funny is the fact that a fan caught Michael Cole walking towards the back in Ray <laughs> And he's talking down the dirty dom like disgusted. like a very disappointed uncle. Like, how could disgusted. you? Disgusted. He's just very disgusted. disgusted, right? And but I think he he called him a freaking idiot. A co- oh, sorry, yeah. he called him something on um on 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 uh, commentary on on Saturday, and I was just mm-hmm. like, oh my god! I just love the fact that Triple H is just letting these guys just say what they want. Mm-hmm. Literally, like they're, they're they're they get to say some forbidden things that you couldn't say under the previous regime. Pro wrestling. Well, wrestler, you know. I mean, the they were on in JPW. They referred to the Brio Bullet Club. Like there have been like casual drops here and there that no, you would never think you would hear an NJPW reference in WWE, like ever. No. Oh. And that was casual. Like, oh yeah, no. Tama was in NJPW. Right, and it's just it's certain instances in the previous regime where they would mention that. You know, of course, when AJ showed up at the Royal Rumble. And they said, former IWGP you champion, the one same off, as Brock. Right. Same, they said, same as Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. So, you, you, you get the vibes. But, like I said, I'm interested to see now what's going to happen because, for those that are in the know or not, it seems like that this coming Friday is uh, someone's contract coming, is uh, coming up for um, expiration. And that happens to be one Becky Lynch. Now, her tweet, you know, on her um, X account stated to be continued. I think that Becky's not going anywhere. This very well could be like, we'll get there later in the show. This could be like the MJF, like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, I'm going to play this game of, like, the great bidding war. But I just don't see her leaving her family. And the mom in me is like, take some time off, right? Like, she has been working. She got called in when Rhea got hurt. Like, we know what that was. Like, I'm sure she wants to take off some time. Like, I just, I can see her wanting to be a mom and just wanting to just be home with her husband and her child and, like, not be on the right. road. Like, that, it wrestling beats up your body, but it also beats up your mental because you have to be, a, you have to be turned on. You can never just have mm-hmm. a minute to yourself. And as a mom, you'll never have a minute to yourself ever again. No, so, like, no. I just... I don't see her going anywhere, and I just think that maybe she just truly wants some time off. And again, it very well could be part of a swerve, like with MJF. Like, I never thought he was going anywhere, but there was a whole big bidding war of 2024. Um, You know what I mean? Like, I just think that hopefully she comes back. Maybe she'll come back. I don't think it'll be SummerSlam. I think that she will randomly pop up in maybe Survivor Series or something like that. I think it'll truly be, like, real time. Not like a month time off. Like, real time off. And to be honest with you, like there was really no bidding war with MJF at all because that's what I mean. Like it was because just there was no to talk about New no. It wasn't going anywhere. It was never going no. anywhere. But he signed the contract a year ago. He never was going anywhere. No, he wasn't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it just really goes to show you that in wrestling, you know, never say never. But also, too, you just never know what's... For all we know, the contract could have already been signed already, and they're just being really, really... And that's what I mean. They're just, like, exactly. Like, I I don't think she's going anywhere. I don't think where she would leave her family. Again, family, mom, hello. Like, I don't think she would leave her family to do someone else's schedule. Because then when truly would she see her husband and her child? Agreed, agreed. Um, I'm going to take a quick time out to let you guys know that the shirt that you're seeing, if you're watching the video version, the Believe in the d podcast t-shirt, you can get that. T- um, hoodies, you name it, mugs, tote bags, over at shop.daretlewis.com. Again, you can get tons of items that are there. 
you know, right, I launched this on a new platform with Bonfire. Huge thanks to Bonfire and the team over there. Quality products. And I'm very, very proud to uh, be a representative of that brand and having the, I guess, the Derek T. Lewis brand and Luciette Music brand with them. But again, shop.derrickthlewis.com. You can get this very t-shirt that you see if you're watching the video version and tons of other items. Don't now, forget, you can also yeah. get t-shirts like the one I'm wearing on the WWE shop. You got a link to that too. Why don't you drop that link? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you go oh, to... Add it. Yes, if you can go to wrestling dot the dlupodcast.com it'll be a link straight to wwe shop.com of course so kick back come back to the dlu podcast i just showed a little love and also my pwt pro wrestling tees shirt site you can go to pwt.derrytlewis.com as well so make sure that you do that so we're gonna move on along to aew's double or nothing and like i said guys by the way this is this was an incredible weekend for pro wrestling i mean truly because you know you had a saturday afternoon ple with wwe and then you had a sunday night event you know with aew you know it, it it's, it's so good to be a wrestling fan right now you know where we we have the ability to watch all of these events in the confines of our own homes if we're out you know we can watch them on our on our smart mm-hmm. devices laptops you name it so to have all of this content at our fingertips, it's incredible. So, wrestling fans, stop complaining. Stop fighting with each other. Tribalism doesn't exist. It, it, it all happens in a squared circle, and uh, depending upon the, the, the promotion, is a 16 by 16, 18 by 18, or 20 by 20 wrestling ring. It's the same stuff. It, some companies just have more money than others. That's it. So, just enjoy it. Enjoy the products. That's all. That's my PSA for today. But, like I said, you know, there was a total of, if you include the two dark matches, and which we'll cover as well, there was a total of 12 matches because... That is buying... entirely too long. Like, let's be honest. Like, I dozed off a few times during some matches. I had to go back. That's the beauty of buying an on Bleacher Report. The next morning, you can go back and watch it, whereas... Very um, true. You can't on the other... You can't um, with anybody else. But yeah, no, I dozed off a few times. I'm not going to lie to you. It just was... It was great. It was engaging. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I didn't fall asleep because I was bored. I fell asleep because I'm old and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I was lucky that I had um, I had the ladies' uh, kids watching it with me, and they were oh, yeah. they were you, very you were good. They were, were they were good. very invested. They were very invested in um, all the matches and really excited to you know as far as who the, who are these people and everything. But on um, the the opening dark match, which I thought should have been on the main card. Was um, my Jersey girl Deanna Perrazzo, um taking off Thunder Rosa, you know, by pinfall? I mean, again, two. I mean, two damn good workers yeah. are in, in, in the wrestling business, male or female. I mean, mm-hmm. you could put Deanna Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa in any company, and they and they will be. I mean, and they have been in pretty much most of the companies. Absolutely, they've been you in know, the three. Absolutely, so no doubt in my mind. But again, the match goes ten minutes, and they were a pretty decent. You know, mm-hmm. I'm out of time you know, for a dark match. You know, they were the first the first match there, 10 minutes, 15 seconds. You know, obviously, uh, Deanna Perrazzo did pin Thunder Rosa by pin, you know, by, you know, by pinfall. But there was a little underhanded stuff going on, and I think they're going to be toying with some oh, heel yeah. turn with Deanna Perrazzo. And like I said, this match should have been, to me, this match should have been on the main card. Because like I said, there were so many championship matches on the card there was some that should have been maybe not. I don't think you should pile so many championship matches on every single card. That's just me. I, agree. I think some you can give a break to. You know what I mean? But that's neither here nor there. Um, the second dark match, um, well, in the buy-in, um, was a the six the trios match with the acclaimed of Matt, uh, Max Caster, um, Anthony Bowens, and Daddy Ass Billy Gunn taking on the Cage of Agony. That's um Toya Leona. Uh, Bishop Corn and Brian Cage. You know, I love, you know, in the beginning about, you know, the acclaimed and daddy ass and all that stuff, but something is just, mi- something's missing with the acclaimed now. I don't, and I mind you, the acclaimed are one of the few AEW acts that was built from the ground up. They're homegrown. Mm-hmm. They're homegrown, and I appreciate that. I really, really do. I think they're just, 
I'd say stale, but like, Mm -hmm. I think they've ran their course. And until I do something different, it's just not, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just, I think they've ran their course. They need to do something different to bring life into this. But at this point, I agree. Like, I'm kind of bored with them and daddy ass. Like, it's just not, it's not doing it for me anymore. I used to be a very big fan. Now I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I'm not just... going to turn the channel when they come on, but I'm not also looking for the match. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, oh my god, trio's match tonight. Yes. It can work. They could, they could, I mean, heck, listen. Stay I want to be, listen, Billy Gunn is 60 years old. I want to look half like that at 60 years old. Facts. I mean, good god. But yeah. there's something missing, but again, they did walk away with the win. You know, 11 minutes, 45 seconds. You know, anything, like I said, and these type of matches, you know, a triple thread or a six-man tag, or it, it, it's uh, it's all going to be, you know, chaotic and fun, yeah. entertaining, and all that. So, it's and by the way, did you see the girl that um, when um, in the note? Oh my god! <laughs> Anthony Bowens uh, was trying to do the scissor, you know, to and the girl was just like looking very nonchalant and just put it on his finger and. They just threw it. I don't know what it was, but I just thought it was hilarious. Cute. Yeah. All right. Now we're in the um, the main card of um, Double or Nothing. Again, like I said, five years, man. Unbelievable. And like I said, congrats to AEW on, you know, s- sustaining, you know, s- you know, ha- you know, through the storm, through all the ups and downs and the, 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 the peaks and all that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're still here. So, and, and I mean, think about it. They did not plan going through a global pandemic in year one, and they weathered the storm. So that mm-hmm. just says a lot. Kudos, about that. shout out for sure. Because, yeah, kudos to TK. Um, opening match was for the international championship. Uh, Will Ospreay um, challenging uh, Roderick Strong. Of course, he uh, the members of um, the undisputed uh, dynasty with uh, Matt Taven and my, um, Mike Bennett, my fellow Patriots fan. And, of course, there's, you know, all types of interference happening right from the start, and they both get thrown, um, Matt Taven and um, Mike Bennett end up getting thrown out by the referee and just let this match happen. i got to tell you, I've been watching Roderick Strong for a very, very long time. I I really love his work and what he's doing in AEW. He's highly underrated. He is. I and mean, he's been underrated for a very long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, even... Even before his WWE NXT run, like I thought that I mean in Ring of Honor he was underrated, absolutely. He was very, I just felt as though that he was like right there on the cusp, and just something wasn't. No one was willing to put the rocket on him, you know what I mean, and shoot him to the moon. But I like it. I love uh, Roderick Strong's work. I really, really do. Mm-hmm. And again, everything you would expect in a in a if you want to call it a pseudo indie, indie match type thing, because you know mm-hmm. they're gonna bring. All the bells and whistles when it comes to that. The flippy stuff, you know, all the strong style, you name it. But I know um, during one of the... Um, he was ready to do his uh, the finisher that he said he wasn't going to use anymore because Brian, you know, he had hurt Brian Danielson. And I know um, our best friend and, uh, and yours, Don Callis, was trying to tell... Because he was on commentary for the match. Mm-hmm. And he was telling him to do it, and he just wouldn't do it. He just mm-hmm. wouldn't do it. But that's neither here nor there. You know, Will Ospreay does win the match by pinfall to win the AEW International Championship. And I was saying last week, on, on last week's episode, I was saying that they're going to London, and I think they wanted to get a lot of their their British acts hopped going into yeah. that show. That being said, I don't know if Will Ospreay has to wrestle for the Heavyweight Championship this year. But there, but there was an announcement during the dark match, and I'm going to talk about that could put him there. And what I mean by that is that um, Doctor Doctor Martha Hart and Tony Khan came out before um, the pay per view came on, and they're talking about they're going to do the Owen this year again. They're going to have the Owen Hart the Owen Hart Foundation tur- Elimination Tournament, and the final match is going to be on July 10th in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, at the Saddle Dome. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the winners of that tournament is go- pretty much like the king and queen of the ring. They're also going to earn a championship match 
at all in London. Now, what I could see happening is Will Ospreay winning the Owen and challenging whoever the AEW champion is at all in London. Could it be Swerve? Could it be whoever? I don't know. But yeah, we're far off to make that to make that assumption right now. Too far off, but I'm just looking at from a perspective of because I was thinking, does Will Ospreay really have to be in the top, the heavyweight title picture now? But if they were to put him in position to do so, winning the Owen tournament would probably be the, the, the best bet. Smoothest, yeah. Bet. I, I think so. But we're going to move on now to the um, the match for the Unified World Trios Championship. Um, the Bang Bang Gang of Jay White, Austin, and Colton Gunn um, defeating the Death Triangle of Pac, uh, Penta El Zero Miedo, and Ray Phoenix. And again, like I said in the earlier trios match, and especially with these six, I mean, especially with the, the, the guys in the death triangle, that's going to do any and everything, high risk, you know, you name it. You know, I, there, was, there was just so much going on in the match. You know what I mean? And the return of Juice. You can't forget yeah, that. Juice Rob- yeah, Juice Robinson. Juice Robinson, that's right. And I had totally forgot that quickly that he was still in Bullet Club Gold. I'm just like, oh, man. So now they're back at full force. And yes, because of that interference, the Bang Bang Gang did retain the Trios Championship, the, the Unified World Trios Championship. I'm wondering when they will eventually split those titles up again? I don't think... Uh, see, I don't know. The problem is, is that the Ring of Honor titles are rarely defended on Ring of Honor. They gotta get better at yeah. that. Yeah. So, like, at least with the Bang Bang Gang, they will show up for Ring of Honor taping. We all know MJF, Adam Cole, never did. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. I'm, I'm just kind of, like, I'm kind of lost because it, it's the more I look at it, you know, I'm just thinking, like, okay, he bought Ring of Honor, Tony Khan. And I'm just like, okay, they're still showing around the club, and that's cool. But where are we going now? Like, where? Like, there needs to be a little bit more consistency, a little bit more brand awareness to Ring of Honor. Because, granted, it's exclusive on an app, on the Honor Club, you know, site. But there needs to be more, you know, promoted about it. They need to promote okay. it a lot more than what they're doing. So we'll okay. we'll we'll see. Next week is for the. Um, AEW, a Women's World Championship. Um, timeless Tony Storm um, defending against the professor herself, Serena Deeb. And again, I I wasn't thinking that Serena was going to win this match. You know what I mean? I'm just look, I look, I'm looking at this pay-per-view on the road to London. Yeah, I, I looked at this match as Tony Storm needed a credible partner, oh, someone right. to wrestle, and Serena Dave, Why not? Um, sure. Um, hey, you know my always phrase: it's a match that happens. Like it didn't, it didn't move any needles. No. Hence, why the TBS title got the triple, the triple main event bill. You know what I mean? They made that title a lot more important than the World Championship, clearly because of who was in it. And I get it. But, man, like, I just, it just, like, and also, too, the casting. I don't see Serena as a baby face. Serena is, yeah, she's, she's a heel. She's, she's yeah. a heel at heart. She's a heel. If you know anything about her history, then yes. Yeah. So, for me, it, it, it kind of took me out of the moment a little bit because I'm just like, okay, I can't see Serena winning this match because, again, I know there's a pay-per-view, that, there's a stadium that they have to sell out. Mm-hmm. And you want to have all of your British, your British wrestlers hot, and that's how, and that's how I'm, I'm as a Booker, Booker's mind. I'm thinking that's where, that's the direction that they're going in. I couldn't see Tony Storm, and she is owning this character. Oh my goodness, Love it. she is owning the character. It is it, like this has to be, I think, Tony Khan's greatest creation, easily mm-hmm. in regards to characters because they are really investing in her. I will give them that. They really, really are. And they're going above and beyond to, to put her in that spot. Mm-hmm. I just wish that now they have to make that title feel just as important because 
the fact that the mid card title was made, it was promoted as far more important than the world title, that concerns me a little bit. Let's talk about who all the mid carders are right now. Will Ospreay, technically, the mid carder. Mm-hmm. Mercedes Monet, the mid carder. Uh, someone else, your TBS champion, Edge. I'm sorry, right at our superstar, whatever you want to call TNT. him. Adam Copeland. Um, TNT, yeah. Like, look at your three yeah. mid carders. Right, and then you have your world champion, and there's no disrespect to Swerve, but they haven't presented him as as, as the guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They haven't presented him yeah. as that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They haven't, they haven't, you know? So it's, it's, it's crazy to think about that. You know what I mean? But, mm-hmm. but we're going to move on now to Orange Cassidy versus Trent Beretta. I mean, this is your typical, you know, grudge match. Orange Cassidy, you know, yeah. I wasn't, a, yeah, I wasn't, you know, and obviously he came back a little darker. You know what I mean? It was a it was a it was a darker denim of blue, and it was mm-hmm. a black Orange Cassidy t shirt, not the the white one. But you know, you saw a little bit of more of a mean streak out of Orange Cassidy. You know, obviously, um, Trent Beretta, you know, was going to do his. You know, he's, he's trying to establish himself now as heel, and and do some underhanded things in the middle of the ring. I enjoyed it for what it was. You know, I'm not into the scoring system. That's not my that's not my domain. That's not my yeah. forte. I'm not going to do that. I think the match served its purpose. Um, they got a lot of time. Listen, there was no match on this card under 10 minutes. Everyone got plenty of time on this pay-per-view. But, of course, Orange Cassidy does win. To, you know, and, hey, listen. No, he can lose matches. And he's just one of those guys where it's like he's Teflon. The, the, fan, the fans are going to love him. Win or mm-hmm. lose, but I honestly thought, and I, I honestly thought that Trent Beretta was going to win this match because they're trying to establish now a new, a new side of him, a new character, so to speak, that can you know maybe get that upper, t- maybe that mid tier mid card at some point, you know, title contender or whatever. But you know, mm-hmm. but hopefully, and I'm sure this this will be far. This match will be far from over. So this feud rather will be far from over. Um. Next, there's going to be for the uh, the triple threat three way match for the FTW um, championship with FTW rules. The Learning Tree, Chris Jericho, defending against Hook and Shibata. Now, oh. I again, this is hard because I was a fan of Chris Jericho going back to ECW. Everyone. Who thought this would be his career path? I I'm just I'm lost because I just I'm I'm confused. I don't know if they're personally trolling because they're clearly going above over the top with this now. Because they're hearing the, they're hearing the fans, please retire, go home, go away. Now I don't know if that is backlash for the real life stuff that that got online that the fans are now aware of. No, I think that we were over Chris Jericho about a year ago. Hmm. Okay. Um, I do think that's part of it. I think that's part of a lot of people are like, yeah, more vocal these days. Yeah. But I mean, like the say, I always talk about Chris Jericho and the fact that he has these factions, right? Mm-hmm. But no one ever gets over in the factions. Not really, no. You know what I mean? Like he had. Where's Sammy? Where's Sammy? Where's Sammy Guevara right now? We hate him. I mean, I say we, I mean fans in general, like not just me and you, but like in general, like fans do not like Sammy. What did he do with Pride and Powerful? Nothing. What did he do with any of the actions he's had? Nothing. He ain't even in AEW anymore. But like, yeah, I heard. Where. When Jericho has these factions, these great ideas, and like wants Mm -hmm. to work with the newbies, like. How does that benefit anybody other than Chris Jericho? Hook don't need it right now. Hook is fine. Hook was fine. Like this is not be- this this program is not benefiting Hook. So no. again, what is the point with Jericho and his factions and his things? Like no one ever gets over under Chris Jericho. The only time I agree with Chris Jericho having the belt was for him to be the inaugural champion. It one hundred percent made sense, right? Like okay. they needed somebody that we knew and we recognize and that is Jericho. So sure, that made sense, but everything after that not so much. No, and I mean this match is just I thought this to me, this match should have been the match he had with Hook should have been on and this is no disrespect to Hook at all. Mm-hmm. But this should have been there were far more important matches on on Dynasty last month 
that should have been on the on the dark that should have been a dark match, and this match should have been a dark match, and and Perazzo and uh, Thunder Rosa should have been should have had that spot. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but but nonetheless, I'm not going to waste too much time on it. Chris Jericho does retain the um the 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 FTW Championship again. I don't know where they're going with this at all, but. Next thing you know now, we have the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship elimination, Eliminator match between John Moxley and Takeshita with Don Callis. And of course, had Takeshita won, he would have received a future IWGP Heavyweight Championship match. I was saying before, I just couldn't see Mox losing on pay-per-view as a champion. And I was right. And, I definitely you know, couldn't see Mox losing after the interview that he gave when he said he's not having fun in AEW. Right. I mean, he's 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 having the time of his life right now, and I mean, you know, he wins by pinfall. So I mean, who knows what's going to happen now? I don't. I mean, and, and the fact that he's able to travel between both companies, I think, is good to give him a break, give his face a break a little bit on AEW. Still, you know, go there, you know, do, do his thing, but obviously put the focus, you know, now on on, uh, on New Japan. So. We'll see, you know, where this goes, you know, as far as him being the IWGP heavyweight champion. But he does defeat Takeshita, as I stated before. Up next, we have the uh, the barbed wire steel cage match for the uh, TNT Championship. Um, Adam Copeland uh, defending against uh, Malachi Black. And, of course, Edge comes out to South of Heaven by Slayer, similar to his interest that he had at WrestleMania 39 when he faced uh, Finn Balor. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really cool. Set the tone for the match. Um, everything that you can possibly think of. And again, we're talking about a barbed wire steel cage match. The moment of the match was um, a couple things. Mm-hmm. They're outside of the ring. And House of Black comes down. And they side with Edge. And I'm like, oh my god, are we going to have a double turn right now? And they all met, and they ended up doing a double swerve, uh-huh. and they beat the crap out of Edge. Because um, Black actually sold it. He was like, oh my god, they're turning on me. And next thing you know, but then, lights go out, and that ominous music happens. It's playing, and who comes from under the ring? Gangrel! Now, i got to right. give props where props is due. Um, my girlfriend's um, brother... Uh, DJ E Nice, shout out to DJ E Nice. Um, he and I were watching this pay per view um, at our at our mini vacation this weekend. And he was saying, "Yo, bro, they're gonna, you know, Gangrel's gonna come back." And I was like, "I just could, I didn't see it." And oh boy, oh boy, he, he gave it to me. He said, "I told you, I told you." I'm like, "You got me, you got me." But it was cool, you know what I mean? And it's crazy to think that Edge pitched um, Gangrel in the brew. Bro. And Vince, I think this is when Vince was still there, and they said no, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, how could you not have the brood combat um, Judgment Day? That would have been mm-hmm. awesome. Perfect. But no, but uh, Edge does um, jump off the top rope onto, onto uh, Malachi Black, and he literally uh, injured his um, he. he yeah, and he's gonna be out. Yeah, he's gonna. Be, it's like he's gonna be out for a while. He even mentioned in the, um, on his um, Twitter that yeah, I got a little cocky and I got to realize that I'm 50 years old, mm-hmm. not 25 years. Feeling old. yourself. He was feeling yourself. Yeah, he's feeling yourself a little bit. But um, they, but, but due to referee stoppage, um, Adam Copeland did retain the uh, TNT Championship. As we're recording this, um, apparently the, the Young Bucks are going to have a um, update on the T on the TBS on the TNT title situation. On uh, dynamite, and just we'll, we'll see what happens from there. Mm-hmm. Um, the one third of the uh, the main event of the triple main event, rather, is um, Mercedes Monet um, challenging Willow Nightingale for the TBS Championship. I mean, I, I mean, again, you know, two incredible workers. You know, people really getting to see what this side of the real life Mercedes Bernardo can do in the ring as Mercedes Monet. You know, obviously, you know, with Sasha Banks, you know, there's this, you know. Persona and you know, obviously there she was pretty limited what she could do in there because obviously there's a there's a safer style of WWE but I think her you know going overseas and doing the indie thing and the New Japan you know stardom and now with AEW I think she can pretty much own you know what she's doing that match actually goes 18 minutes even and you know Mercedes Monet does um, defeat Willow Nightingale 
for the uh, TBS Championship. But after the match, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. As uh, Chris Statlander and um, Stoke was helping Stoke. Willow, big Stoke. And by the way, he has one of the funniest Twitter um, Twitter accounts of all time. Follow Stoke, follow Stokely Hathaway and tell him I sent you. But they're walking up the ramp, and Statlander just clotheslines Willow mm-hmm. Nightingale out of the blue. I mean, oh my god! And the turn happened. I, I, I was it was totally unexpected. But I was thinking it was nah, going to be Willow was expected. I, I, I didn't know who was going to turn on who because I'm just like, Stoke is not a baby face. No, he's not. Yeah. I knew one of these days the, the turn was going to happen. I didn't know who, but here we are. So now we have the wall on Long Island. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> so right. I, we'll see what happens. But what I was really surprised that didn't happen, I was thinking that DMD was going to show up after... Um, Mercedes won the title, but I guess they're going to save that. But they may save that, what I think might happen at Forbidden Door, if she retains that championship, maybe DMD shows up to get ready for London. Maybe. I can see that yeah. happening. We'll see. Um, the next match um, is for the AEW uh, World Championship. Um, Swerve Strickland with uh, Prince Nana um, defeating, uh, actually he defended um, against Christian Cage uh, with Kill Switch, Nick Wayne, and Mother Wayne, and again, it, it was a it was a good match. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. it was, uh, I mean, obviously, you ex- you you expected your outside interference and all that stuff. You you, you expect that. You, yeah. What did you think? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, you expected the shenanigans, right? Like you knew it wasn't going to be a clean match because no. neither one of them are clean workers. Um, right. They're both. Right. I understand, like, they're trying to make Swerve a face, but deep down, like, Swerve is a heel, yeah. and we all know Christian's a heel. Um, so, again, I never expected a clean match. I think that the match got the job done, and hopefully they push Swerve as a, as an actual champion. Like, yes, we, I recognize he's a champion. He has the belt, but, like, he is not seen. He's not represented as a champion. I don't know. Maybe he needs to do something, they need to do something with that, like, immediately, or, like, take the belt off of him something. Like, I'm just... I'm bored. And I shouldn't be bored with my champion. At least no, Samoa fact, Joe. No, no, no. Coming off of Samoa right. Joe and MJF, like, I want it, like, personality. Like, I want all of these things. And they're, right. like, they ain't giving it to me, right? Like. What bothered yeah. me was after he won, the, the Dynamite, after he won the title, he's in a match. Open. And just went and to a match. An opening match, and there was no promo or anything Him, because. Ring. Match no like cool entrance no nothing just him match. Now the he only got, thing he got his ass beat too at that like right, man, just a match right. like, he got his ass beat right but also too I would have put if he would have said on on um X Twitter whatever you want to call it hey guys no talk this Wednesday you know I'm here to wrestle but Saturday on Collision you will hear from me so if he if you would have done that I would have been like all right cool he wants to go out he wants to you know start this this championship reign off right wrestling and i get it but since there was no i'm just like okay why is my world champion you know we're not hearing from him Mm -hmm. so that was the the huge problem i had but again swerve does win and and retains the um, aew world championship they got 24 minutes and 50 seconds out of it and now it's time for the main event um the elite um Taking on Team AEW, which consists of um, FTR, Darby Allen, and uh, Brian Danielson, Anarchy in the Arena match. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness! There were things in that match that I honestly did not think I would ever see. Um, the flame, uh, the flame throw. You know, I can't like, see his face right now if you're on radio or if you're listening on a podcast, but if you watch this on YouTube, just like the seriousness in his tone right now in his face is like I mean Okay. There's 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 a uh, time and place for everything. But I mean he I mean he literally like it wasn't this wasn't a Hollywood set where there's all these things in place and that type of stuff. In professional wrestling, there is very small 
room. For air. You know what I mean? Like, it's small mm-hmm. room for that. So, he sets Jack Perry on fire. And, of course, you had, you had these idiot fans online talking about, oh, I wonder where Fragile Phil is thinking now. Fragile Phil is, is earning millions of dollars right now. He ain't thinking about y'all, so why are you thinking about he's him? Not think, he's not even it's thinking about AEW him. right now. Not even a little bit. So, now, God forbid if something would have happened to Jack Perry for real and, and when he got caught on fire. If he would have had second, second degree burns or whatever it was that he could have potentially had. What if the fire extinguisher didn't go off in time? You know what I mean? And, you know, you had that. Again, they're fighting all over this, this, this arena. I mean, again, kudos. You know what I mean? They're, they're going at it. And they hang Darby Allen from the top of, um, I guess, from the, they have the rope, you know, coming down to the ring. Well, I hope they talked to Martha before they did that, but that's here nor there. Say again? I hope they talked to Martha before they did that. Yeah, I mean, we can also talk. She approved the sting spot, so I'm assuming this was like. Yeah, I'm okay. assuming she did too, but it's like. Oh, she well, did. This she is... did approve it. But oh, the well. thing is, is that the. I'm going to put this. They hang him from the top, mm-hmm. and they had those sneakers with the, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, with the thumbtacks in it, and they had the pyro in it, and they super kick Darby Allen. Mind you, this man broke his foot, or whatever it was. He hurt his foot. He broke his stick. foot in that match with Jay White, and then he got hit by a bus in New York. And he still wants to climb Mount Everest. Yo, I guess. If there are many signs telling you, no, don't do it, these, these are the ones that are telling you. But anyways, the Elite, they do win the, um, the Anarchy in the Arena match. Um, I, gotta, I gotta say this. My boy, um, Brian H. Waters, shout out to Brian H. Waters. You can, uh, you can follow him on Twitter. Um, he's, he's a part of the, uh, the Ringer podcast with um, Kazim and... Um, Seahawk, um, Cameron Hawkins, shout out to those guys who do a tremendous job covering the world of professional wrestling. Brian and I have known each other close to 12 years, you know, maybe probably longer than that now, 14 years. And when he and he stole the host of the wrestling realm as well with um, the real Dwayne Allen. He was talking about how Okada has lost his aura. He's lost his mystique since joining AEW. He doesn't feel wrong. special anymore. It's not wrong. I have to tell you, I say, you know, you're right. I said, because when, how am I going to miss you when you don't go away? Not even that. He's in regular matches. I feel like you should have people that, like, are pulled out, right, for certain things. And, like, if I see you literally every week on TV, like, it just, he's right. Like, he's kind of lost. It's not. He lost the the mystique. Yeah. And uh, when I, because when I think of Okada, man, you know, his New Japan, you know, run and uh, the, the yeah, tremendous run he had there, mm-hmm. I'm just like, man, you know, that's, he, he was the guy. Mm-hmm. And now he's just a guy. Mm-hmm. And this is no disrespect to him. 100%. I'm just talking about how he's, how he's being presented. presented. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like Okada, to me, Okada shouldn't have been in this anarchy um, in the arena match. A guy like him, I would not put in that match. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is too special of a talent to be in that type of match. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 100%. Like I, I don't know. And like, and even the goofy stuff that he was doing, he was like, "Sing!" When he asked the um the backstage and um interviewer to sing, and I'm just like, "Really? I Not? I mean, okay, it's cool, but I the, it just it just kind of just took me out of the moment. So, okay. but." Yeah, but like I said, that that is uh, anarchy. That that's anarchy in the arena match. That's AEW's double or nothing. You know, obviously um, they have coming up next is uh, Forbidden Door that's going to be taking place in Long Island next month. But mm-hmm. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about what happened earlier in the pay per view. What Adam Cole did come out after the first match, and there he's talking, you know, talking typical Adam Cole trash, and out of the blue. On the uh, on the big screen, you know, there's a house, and there's, you're walking through these hallways, and you see, you know, the the, 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 the JF the, memorabilia, the JF memorabilia, nightmare family, the scarf, and of course, MJF comes out as 
Triple H did when he returned at Madison Square Garden in January of 2002. It was interesting. I was like, okay, nice homage to Hunter. And, you know, he, uh, kick, he you know, kicks, uh, kicks out of cold where the sun doesn't shine. You know, throws him out of the ring and he, you know, cuts a promo talking about how, you know, I'm the wolf of wrestling and I'm not effing leaving. And he has a tattoo on his um on the most lower the lower part of his leg and it says it was like, I guess game chips and it says bet on yourself and it had the logo of AEW. So that he just he said it's not you know, I'm sure it's not a surprise to you, Marks, no he like no he like no offense and he just said, you know, I'm staying in AEW. So we kinda knew that because if if they were if the rumors were oh he's mm-hmm. gonna be going to WWE, he would have shown up at the Rumble, he would have shown up at Mania. So at this point it's just like eh you know, I think he, he, he is where he should be right now, I think. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. So, like I said, we had a lot to cover, you know, on this episode, you know, between two companies and, you know, what, you know, the the possibilities of what's going to, what's to come. You know, obviously, WWE has um, Clash at the Castle that's coming up, and it was just announced that Drew McIntyre is cleared, and he mm-hmm. will challenge Damian Priest for the uh, World Heavyweight Championship at Clash of the Castle in his hometown, his home country of Scotland. So, but it's interesting because June 28th at Madison Square Garden at SmackDown, the featured match is going to be hey, Jay Uso mm-hmm. versus D- Damian Priest. Now, I don't know if they're doing that to throw us off, but I will be there. Me, the Queen, and her daughter will be there. So, I'm. I, we're, we're going to see what's mm-hmm. going to happen. If it's going to be you know, whether it's going to be a non-title match, if, you know, if, if Priest is the champion, again, we don't know. But right. I just found it very interesting that they announced that match. And I, I know Drew McIntyre had um, responded to it, so we'll see. But before we get out of here, you know, you can tell the people where, you know, they can find you on social media, the whole nine yards. You guys can find me at Charm City Gabby. Um, Gabby is G-A-B-I-I on all social media platforms. Um, and keep a lookout. Um, me and my friends have started um, our own podcast, Lip Gloss and Ladders, coming to you soon this summer. Well, I will be subscribing to that when that does come. To, that when that does go live, and again, you could definitely follow her on all social platforms. And again, she's a, a great addition to the D Loop podcast. And as you can see now, we're going to be doing video content. You know, every single time now, we're going to really up you know up our game. You mm-hmm. know, in regards to what we're doing here. You know, obviously with um with the brand here and Believe Network, you know, we're really kind of take it take take it to the next level. So, you know, I appreciate all that she does, what she continues to do for the show, what the value that she adds, and I'm a, I'm beyond again. I, I say it all the time. You know, there is no Dilu podcast without you, and especially all the listeners out there. So, again, guys, you know, thank you very much, and um, till next time. All right, we'll see you soon.